So is this good mood in stocks a positive sign into year end, or is it all just a head fake? Joining me now to help make sense of things is Neil Hennessy. He's Hennessy Fund's chief market strategist. And Neil, it's good to have you on set. Welcome. Thank you. You know, a, a nice rally day for you to be here as well. I, I mean, you have to be generally pretty bullish on stocks, but do you worry at all about the economy? No, I'm bullish on stocks. I mean, I, the, the market's in very good shape. People forget very quickly. But if you look at last year, the market was down. All three indexes were down. This year, all three are up. But if you look behind the curtains, you're going to find out eight companies have been driving that success this year and were the drivers of the downside last year. Mm -hmm. Google, Microsoft, Netflix, Tesla, um, and, um, NVIDIA. Yeah. So eight out of 3,000 stocks are controlling the NASDAQ, which is 3,000 companies. But my understanding has been if you peel that away, and certainly if you look at the Russell 2000, it's negative on the year. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that small is where, you know, there's more balance sheet risk, maybe less, you know, um, you know market uh, position that they can defend against companies. You know, just a variety of factors that make them structurally weaker right now. Do you think there, there's a different story? Well, I've always loved the mid-cap arena. And I, I like the mid-cap arena for a couple of different reasons. Number one is they can survive an economic tsunami. Hmm. They're also big enough to make an acquisition a small-cap arena that would be accretive to them, but also big enough to be accretive to somebody else. And so, like, when you stay in the Hennessy mid-cap 30 fund, it's between $1 and $10 billion is the market cap, which is a great area to be either to be an acquirer or be acquired. That's interesting. We'll talk later about some of your favorite names. You like Casey's General. Uh, there's a couple of others in here. There's like three in particular, along with Casey's, Dick's, and BJ's, all of which are kind of interesting to dive into, but we'll leave that aside for the time being. You're one of the rare people in markets who has been through high inflation. You know, people like to run the numbers and say something like, you know, 20% of fund managers have been alive during it, when inflation's as high as it is now or something like that. Um, just give me some perspective when we talk about the tenure at 470 or when we're concerned about high inflation and high rates. How do you kind of sift through that based on your experience? Well, you're too young to understand, so I'll give you a little history <laughs> lesson. But back in the early 80s, we saw interest rates of prime go to 21.5%. Inflation was running at 18%. So if you had invested in a 30-year 6% bond, you were just out of luck. You were just dead. And I remember as a young stockbroker going to talk to people, they wanted to talk to me, but they were actually eating god-awful, uh, as bad as it was, dog and cat food, because they couldn't... Uh, uh, keep up with inflation in Jeez. any way. So you look today, inflation's running three and a half percent. Inflation's somewhat stagnating a little bit. You have seven percent interest rates, seven and a half percent mortgage. My first mortgage was 14 and a half or 15 percent. The difference was in those markets, in those times, we gave up the washing machine. We gave up going on thir out Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night. We saved our money put a roof over the head for the family. In today's market, people get scared because we got used to, or at least the younger generation got used to, paying nothing to borrow. Yeah. Which it comes back to, to hit you in the end. But in, and that's why, you know, so do you think there's anything investors are missing about how this cycle could play out? In other words, when you are still kind of pretty constructive on stocks and some of these are consumer facing, is that because you think we're ultimately going to navigate this period better than most expect? Well, you know, everybody's been talking about a recession, but you can't have a recession if you don't have high uh, uh, unemployment. We, we can't even hire for the jobs that we have today. Plus, when you have low inflation and you have wage growth, that's good for the economy. That's good for the consumer. So at the end of the day, those two are working together that we just have to be patient. There's a lot of things going on around the world in a lot of headlines. But if you just talk in economics, companies are in very, very good shape with their cash flow, with their profits, with their expansion, their capex, you name it. They're in really good shape. All right. We'll circle back, like I said, with some more detail on this in a little bit. We'll leave it there for now. We appreciate it, Neil. Thanks. Neil Hennessy from Hennessy Funds.